Now the hitter for Stony Brook will be Steve Goldstein. He came in to play left field. Steve Goldstein, a freshman from East Meadow, New York. Low to mid-80s, Cotton. Goldstein hammers one to right field, and that could be gone. It is a home run. Steve Goldstein has given his Stony Brook Seawolves a 3-2 lead, a solo shot here in the 10th. But Steve Goldstein's fourth home run of the year has given the Seawolves a 3-2 lead here. And one more time, we'll see if Stony Brook can maintain that one-run lead. They're three outs away, going bottom 10 in Baton Rouge. Now with a 3-1 lead, a chance to add to it here. It's Steve Goldstein, the left fielder. Right field, Alex Edward will field it. They'll send the runner safe. Kevin Krause gets in there, and now it's 4-1 Stony Brook. All three runs in this inning against Ryan Eads, coming with two outs. Well, you know, Eads' challenge has just been location. If he elevates in the zone, you know, he gets in trouble. He's got good stuff, but that curveball sort of caught too much of the plate. And with these balanced hitters, they, they're not fooled. They're not out in front. They're just staying on it. Uh, they're just anticipating and having a good plan up there. And now there is action in the LSU bullpen, the junior from Thibodeau High School. Right, this guy. Line drive to the gap in left center. Goldstein is there, chases it down nicely. And Katz works his way back to first base. That one looked like it might drop. Yeah, but you can see in this particular swing, he got a little, little bit towards the end of the bat. And that ball kind of started to hook back to the left fielder. So it didn't have that final backspin to sort of, sort of cut the gap in half. And you can see it hang up just long enough. Left fielder Goldstein able to pull out. Steven Goldstein making a nice play out there. So that's the first out of this ninth inning for LSU. And here, you know, once again, early on, you know, once those pitches got up, it was it was trouble from the start. Goldstein first pitch swing, ground ball, and Austin Nolan's going to have no play. It looked like it almost hit Tissenbaum there, going second and third, and Nolan may have been screened. Well, it screened a little bit, but you know, you also have to credit. The base runner coming in, the second best per regime. He was running hard, and he didn't have a play there. That's the short play, but look at the lead he has at first base. So he was able to get through there to get to second base. He had no play there, and, and Goldstein can run up well enough to make him not make a throw. It's a base hit for Goldstein, so here comes the most dangerous man. Branding two. There go the runners. Here's a line shot down the left field line, and that's hooking foul. Steve Goldstein not fooling around down there in that corner. He was going to climb into the stands if he could. And we've seen that through a two games so far from Stony Brook. These guys are here to win. And right now they're one win away from Omaha. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up here to Tyler Hanover. Still looking for his first hit of the Super Regional. Jones lines one to left center. There's Jankowski again. But Steve Goldstein calls it off and... Frankie Van Durk is out at the inning, but the LSU Tigers get her on. We'll go top eight at 6 2, Stoney. Even though you're down five. Steve Goldstein looks at a call strike. Goldstein, the third of those three freshmen in a row out of East Meadow at 5'11, 175. Another body batting average, 344. He can hit with power. He's got three triples, eight doubles, and four home runs this season. A lot of space in left center and right center. Ball is high. Just feel a little pressure now being applied by the Stony Brook team. Sixth in America East with that 344 average. One of 11 from Long Island on the team. Off speed pitch misses. You just feel the game starting to change a little bit. Goldstein today is playing left field. He's got great speed. It looks like he's going to take over in center field. For Jankowski next year. I have a streaky hitter. I'm hoping a good streak shows up here in Omaha. Goldstein tracked that ball all the way in. He tracked that one pitch of fastball that was just out. That time tracked that fastball all the way. It was just down and away. That was working back to his kind of account. 3-1 count. You expect to get a fastball. But this is a spot where Plutko can drop that changeup. We haven't seen it a lot, but 
His changeup can be really good. Hitters count three and one with men in scoring position. Fouled at the plate. They call it a foul ball. Let's swap. So we'll go three two. We'll talk about uh, this ball being really close to being a fair ball. That's one you better be running on there. It might have been beyond really close. That one that was, looked like it was right on the line. Played some fair territory. And you can see Heineman trying to coerce the umpire into thinking, look, look I'm going to kind of nudge it out that way. Trying to block him out, too. No. In the dirt, Heineman with a good block, but it's a ball four, and the bases are now loaded with Sewell. The ultimate in respect from LSU is to still come to Omaha when you've got the tickets, even though your team is not here, and kind of hop on the bandwagon of Stony Brook. They start spelling your name with an E-A-U-X. <laughs> that means they like it. That's, they love that's it. a good thing. They've come all the way. That's beautiful. Go Stony Brook. And it's interesting, Paul Maneri, the LSU coach, after being beaten by Stony Brook, said about... Saints team. I can't imagine anyone in the country being better than that team. 